From massive pieces of mangled steel to a crushed taxi cab with an unpaid fare on the meter, Hangar 17 at New York's JFK Airport houses a collection of artifacts that survived the attacks of 9-11. Walk through this 80,000 square foot space and you'll feel trapped in time. These were vehicles that were destroyed on September 11th. Um, you know, this was somebody's car that was parked in the garage. This was one of the FDNY's trucks. This is someone had responded to the site. These were first responders, And correct. then something, probably part of the building, crushed it. FDNY, this truck was the medical examiner. The medical examiner who reported immediately after the, you know, you, you had the plane hit the North Tower. The towers hadn't collapsed. I mean, at 846, the first plane hit. And the medical examiner reported this was, this was a truck. It was setting up a morgue when it was damaged. Bill Baroni is deputy executive director of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Their offices used to be located in the Twin Towers. On the morning of 9-11, 84 of his co-workers died in the attacks. September 11th, of course it's personal. I mean, for, I mean, there are people that I work with the Port Authority who rushed down the stairs to get out of their offices. There are people at the Port Authority who never came home. There, I mean, there are people who I mean, the young woman I went to high school with worked in the tower. This is personal to all of us. Baroni's in charge of the 1,200 artifacts that were pulled from the wreckage of the World Trade Center. In 2002, workers brought them to this hangar located at New York's John F. Kennedy Airport. These tents that you're seeing are temperature controlled. Oh, wow. wow. These items, um, yeah. these items have to be, it's not so much temperature, but humidity. And I'll show you the humidity. A number of the pieces, none of the artifacts have to be kept in a humidity controlled environment. As humidity not. controlled so it won't rust and exactly. go away. Exactly right. These pieces will go on display at the 9 11 Memorial and Museum in New York City next year. Other artifacts are located at memorials across the country and museums overseas. Present art. We view this as an opportunity that the story of 9 11 which affected everybody. People are going to be able to go to their hometown, wherever it is, and go visit and see a piece of that trade center. It really is sort of symbolic, if not almost a metaphor, for how twisted a reality that day was. No one could process what that day felt like. No one could process that smell. Nobody could process what he or she was seeing. Just as you can't really process a ladder that's made of solid steel that's twisted in this way it was just you, you see this and you say what what force could what amount of force was needed to do this yeah. to these things yeah and those who weren't alive on that day 100 years from now get a see sense it. as a result of this one of the items crews pulled from the devastation is the 360 foot north tower antenna it was the last piece witnesses saw of one world trade center before it collapsed into the cloud of rubble. This, this was communications for police and fire. It was television stations. Television station, sure. uh, many television stations in the city went off the air for a long time after 9-11 because this is the way they broadcast. Sure, this was, this was the entire region. At a, you know, I remember growing up as a kid in, in Hamilton, New Jersey, and you'd get New York and Philly TV stations and the New York TV stations came out of the World Trade Center. Also turning up in the wreckage, elevators from the towers, train cars, even bicycles still chained to the racks. All of us who would commute around New York, it's one of the path train turnstiles and obviously damaged that day. And the, the quick car was, was actually in the machine, but you can see it was one of the 20 trip tickets from that day. Oh, wow. the month. Yeah. This was Ladder 3, which lost 12 firefighters that day. Well, you can see just the absolute damage that took place. And only a few feet away, there were those who did escape from the falling debris. The cab driver survived. This cab driver this survived. This cab driver survived. He was out of his cab. Yeah. He had just left the car. I, so many people tell stories of just having to abandon vehicles or bicycles or yep. shopping carts or whatever. Scientists are still studying many of these pieces of steel for explosive residue in DNA. You can see how the scrapings of the medical examiner, our, our historian folks tell me obviously they were searching for 
DNA. remains and DNA of, of 2,752 people that we lost. Wow. This is scrapings from the medical That's, examiner. Yeah. Oh my God. Baroni hopes to preserve these objects because each piece has a story to tell about that day. The opportunity to make sure that this is preserved for generations that I will never meet, that is an unbelievable opportunity and a blessing in a way uh, to me. And I, all of us at the Port Authority carry that every day. And it's hard sometimes. I haven't seen this binder in a little while. One of my favorite binders of materials. Another unlikely curator learned that little things like flyers, postcards, and pamphlets just also an tell a story. I found an ATM receipt underneath a, an ATM, picked it up, looked at it, and said, it said, transaction denied, 9-11-01. This is a little piece of history. And we're looking at 300, 400 pieces here that are, um, may well be used in the 9-11 museum. Very nice. <laughs> Real proud of what I did. Michael Ragsdale, a paper collector gathering documents in the aftermath of the attack. His paper trail comes to a total of 44 binders filled with 4,000 pieces of paper. Just collected flyers wherever I could. I went inside offices, subway stations, hospitals. I went inside union halls. I uh, went inside any open door I could find. I looked at any bulletin board I could find. The pieces may not be old, but they're part of American history. Well, I wanted to contribute to the aftermath story. I just didn't think anybody would go out there and, and grab the on the streets reaction. Each page transports viewers back to the days after the attacks when there was so much uncertainty. Hundreds of New Yorkers had no idea where their loved ones were, so they put up posters all over the city in desperate attempts to find them. Well, I believe he's out there somewhere. But there were also messages of hope and support. So I worked at the United Nations for four days and collected all the speeches, as many speeches as I, as I could at the, at the press center. I just wanted to show how the world came together, how New York came together. I guess tens of thousands of these were used. As, uh, Ragsdale hopes zero. his mementos capture a unique perspective of the times. The significance of Ragsdale's collection has been recognized by, among others, the U.S. Library of Congress, which has included more than 900 documents from the collection in its September 11th digital archive. I'm just very proud I did it. I want my children to see it someday. Now I'm a new grandfather. I want my granddaughter to see it someday. And um, I just feel proud here nine, ten years later. When we return, the exhibit that perhaps more than any other will bring the horror of 9-11 back to life.